because I don't know if I'm supposed to be shooting it. It's easier. Okay, that part is easier with Leon just because you get four other or you get three other. No, I'm like three manhandled. <laughs> uh, yeah, just because the only thing I can, yeah, because Le or Leon gets a anti-tank uh, rocket launcher with like a bunch of with like three extra rounds. So obviously it'll do deal with deal, uh, a lot of damage. I don't know if this is doing damage to it, but whatever. Oh, fuck fuck it. How the hell are you still kicking? like boyfriend and girlfriend no we're just uh, well we actually just met last night <laughs> yeah that would have been one hell of a first date though yeah you have no idea look he might be able to give us a ride what if it's not just the city get cherry out of here Is it over? I don't know. But if it's not, we'll stop it. Whatever it takes. Yeah, you're damn right we will. As long as we stick together, we'll be fine. Come on. Hey, you guys can adopt me. <laughs> adopt uh. you? <laughs> we can get a puppy. A uh, puppy? And a parrot. Next up on this boring Wednesday is a song to get your blood pumping. Well, that's uh, Claire's second run. Pretty much the same since we already did it with Leon the first time, just obviously with her story going on. But. Going back on what I was saying about Netflix, yeah, it's like with Fuller House, the sequel to Full House. Personally, I've never seen it. Fuller House, I have seen Full House. Not, nah, I've seen a few episodes of Fuller House. And I don't know, from what I've heard other people say, they say like, 
it's just not as good as Full House, which, I mean, I don't know. I can't really be the judge of that since I've never watched it, so... But the one that really comes to mind for me, where it hits hard, is the Avatar live-action show. Because um, I'm, I'm a big uh, Avatar The Last Airbender fan. You know, I grew up watching that. One, one of my favorite uh, cartoons. So when I heard they were making a live-action... Uh, like a live-action remake of the show, I was looking forward to it. Especially since they had the original, uh, or they had brought back the original creators, so for sure it wasn't gonna end up like that trash live action movie by M. Night Shyamalan, which let me tell you, that movie really made me not like him. I still don't even like him to this day. I know he made Unbreaking and Split, and I heard Glass was kinda ass, so. But the other two moves are pretty good, I guess, so... Regardless of, he butchered, uh... The Last Airbender for me. But anyways... I was excited for it, cause, you know... It seemed like they are kind of making, like, a comeback. Like, Avatar was kind of making, like, a comeback ever since, uh, Legend of Korra ended. I was like, what... Five years ago, I think? When Legend of Korra ended? Either way... Uh, but then, I remember I read an article that said that the creators had left, and they said it's because they just weren't happy with how Netflix was running the show and all, it wasn't like giving them creative freedom and all that, so they had to leave, but unfortunately I guess Netflix still has like the rights to that show, so... They decided to go through with it, you know, without the creators, and when I heard that, like, oh, okay, yeah, nah. Then, I, I don't think it's gonna be that good anymore, cause, uh, you know, they got rid of the original creators. And we already saw what happened the last time they tried to make, uh, Last Airbender, uh, live-action sequence without the original creator, so... Yeah, so I was not really looking forward to it, but then, I think a couple of weeks ago, like, it's some more information surfaced about the show that I guess they're making changes, like Katara being the older sibling now over Sokka, which I just thought was, like, one of the dumbest changes I've ever heard, like, why? I really don't even understand why they did that, because, you know, Sokka, that's kind of like part of his character, you know, he's supposed to be like the older brother, you can see that he gets overprotective over Katara, and all that, and also, I always thought that like, he was kind of like, I always felt like he was like the smart one in the group. Um, cause he's often the ones coming up with like the plans and all that. And, you know, I would think it's just because he's a little older, he has a little more experience. And, you know, when his father left, when their father left, he was, you know, that's another thing now that I realize. So, cause when his father left, he was basically like the oldest, um, he was basically like the oldest man in the tribe because all the other men went to go fight in the war. So he was, I guess he was basically like, I guess the tribe's protector. And, you know, it, it just wouldn't make sense for him to be the protector still if Katara is older. I don't know, I think it's dumb, and then it just even makes the whole relationship between her and Aang weirder. Because I don't know if they plan on making Aang older, which if they do, I don't even see why. Kind of ruin the dynamic, but let's say they don't. You gotta remember, Aang was 12 when this sh throughout the show. Katara was 14. Two age difference. 
or two year difference not that big of a deal i mean i guess yeah Aang is still considered like a kid while Katara is already like a teenager <sighs> but even then I wouldn't say it's that bad like I said it's like a two year difference so whatever and I don't know if she's now supposed to be because I think they said they're gonna make her 16 so like a 16 year old falling in love with the 12 year old now that's where it gets kind of weird because 16 you're only like two years away from being considered an adult and Aang is and a 12 year old they're still considered a kid so you may say like, oh yeah, like an 18 year old going out with a 22 year old isn't that weird. I mean, not really, because once you pass 18, it's not, you know, age is really just more of a number at that point. Sure, is it weird for like, I don't know, like a 30 year old to be going out with a 70 year old? Yeah, but nothing illegal about it. Nothing, I guess, really morally wrong about it. Maybe just not socially common I guess but yeah Netflix just yeah Netflix be doing dumb changes like that and I feel like they're only doing it just just I don't know I guess they really want to make Katara like the sh typical sh like strong female type character which I don't even get why they're even trying to do that when she she was already that kind of character in the original you know it's not like she was just like a damsel in distress or anything like that she was like a very capable character we don't really need more feminist ideals going on or whatever so i don't know i'm trying to think of other Netflix shows that come to date i mean i guess like you know, I guess the Death Note movie, because that was made by Netflix. I never watched the anime. I did see the movie just because I remember my sister told me about it, and it just sounded hilarious. And even though I never watched the anime, I know what it's supposed to be about. And the fact that they just, like, whitewashed all the characters. And just completely changed the story to make it, I guess, more... Uh, more suitable for western audiences yeah I, there's a reason why that meme about the whole uh, like Netflix adaptation thing like when they have an, like the manga the anime and then the Netflix adaptation like the picture for the Netflix adaptation tends to be like so like whack or something I feel like it's for a reason but uh, it's funny how I got off topic talking about Netflix just because I was talking about Resident Evil. I don't know. I really don't know. I feel like if Capcom is like a huge part of like the production, then I guess we'll be in safe hands, kind of. Because even then, Capcom sometimes they they don't even know what they, they may they don't even know what to do with their own franchise like making some errors like like re3 i mean even though i like re3 it's just they really could have added more but whatever that's damage has already kind of been done and then the same thing with resident evil outbreak or not outbreak Resistance, the multiplayer mode that everyone says no one asked for. I only played it like a couple of times and just never picked it up again. And like I said, I don't even know if they are even updating it or supporting it. I haven't heard anything about that. And then there's the the reverse, which is supposed to be, I guess, uh, a battle royale type thing, which that had like really ugly graphics from the looks of the trailer. And I don't know, just yeah, I don't really know.
But I don't know. I guess I, will, I guess we'll just have to see what happens with the show. Uh, or or the movie or whatever it's gonna be. I guess. Like like I said, it, I'm want to be excited for it because it looks cool. Just the only, it's just the only problem I have with it is one. It's, it's enough. It's, uh, it was created for Netflix, and I'm pretty sure Netflix is kind of like has their hand in it. So obviously that worries me a little since I really can't trust Netflix. The other thing is. Um, the other thing is, uh, well, yeah, I mean, Capcom, if Capcom's on the helm, then maybe it wouldn't be that big of, it wouldn't be that bad, but still, uh, you, you, I wouldn't even trust, I wouldn't even fully trust Capcom these days either. It's just with Capcom, I feel like they take a step forward, or they do something right that the fans love, and then they, they just, like, take a step back and just do something that everyone hates like the RE2 like with Resident Evil 7 and this game you know there are two steps in the right direction Resident Evil 7 was a great game kind of brought back the series back to its horror roots and elements RE uh, this game is a uh, This game, you know, is a f faithful recreation of the remake, but modernized and stuff. Maybe even a little better than the old one. I don't know. You know, I've never played... Nah, actually, I don't know. I don't even know if I would say that, because... Well, they did do a lot of right. Obviously, they did cut corners in some areas. Like, with the whole two-story thing just being... Just really making not a lot of sense. I know the original did have like a proper two different scenarios type thing not this where it's basically like the same thing just with a different beginning and a different and the and the true ending at the end so yeah you got them doing stuff like that or even regardless of its fault this game is still pretty good but then you got that and then you got them doing stuff like Resident Evil 3 where they basically just only did it because they reused a lot of the assets from this game and they felt like it'd be quick to just get it out they cut like a lot of content out where like the game is so short I think like once yeah they say like I think it's only like two or three hour long game once you already know everything so and then just because they were also working on the dumb multiplayer that just I don't know it's really not that fun it's not that engaging to me and then now doing stuff like making a battle royale like really Resident Evil battle royale who asked for that anyways I'm droning on too long but so finally we are done with Resident Evil 2 yeah it took me a year <laughs> it's just with the whole pandemic and I've been so busy with school like you have no idea and other things going on in my life I, it's just hard to like just sit down take the time to play and it's not even the playing I guess it's just more like the editing and uploading that's what takes more time well also the playing because it's not like I can just play at any time I can only play at certain times due to yeah I can only just play at certain times so, and record so it's kind of hard but we're finally done with this I was gonna do the the DLC and like the for survivor and tofu survivor but I think I'm just I think I'm just gonna take a break like just a short break from this game because I've been, I've been playing this game a lot since I got it just because I wanted to play it the first time then I got to record it so 
I really already want to get the thing is I already want to get started in like another project that I've been like wanting to do for a while and at this point like I'm already done with Spongebob too so the two games that were really that I was really working on that was taking time I'm finally done with them so I just want to move on uh, I know the DLC will probably won't take that long it's probably like another like hour or two at the most but either, either, either way uh, I'd rather just I'd rather just take a break from this game. I will get back to it. I will, you know, like, probably like a few weeks from now or something when I'm kind of like in the mood. I'll hop back on this game, do the DLC, and just completely, completely finish this game. Story-wise, you know, I know there's like other content, but uh, you guys don't need to see that. that. At that point, that's just for me, if I just want to be a completionist. Um... So yeah, we're finally done with this game. Uh and then also since I think uh, since I've been playing a lot of Resident Evil since I kind of started this channel, I think this is a good time to like take a break from just Resident Evil in general for the channel. Like I know you guys are probably tired of it. I know I'm a little tired that and you know, I've Still haven't even beat RE0, which I need to, I want to beat it before I actually like go through it because it's a lot like RE1 and I don't want to keep dying and restarting or whatever. Then there, and then I don't even have 4, 5, 6 and the rest, so I need to get those games. But th this is basically what the Raccoon City trilogy. I already finished 1, I already finished 3, I just finished 2. I guess 0 is left because it's like the prequel to everything. But we could get we could worry about that later. But yeah, I, I'd say for now, don't expect any more Resident Evil content from me for a while. I'm, I'm gonna take a break take a break from Resident Evil because I really want to explore other games. I look at my channel and like I think like more than half the co my content is all Resident Evil. So I need a long deserved break from this franchise for a little. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, yeah, that that this is Resident, that was Resident Evil 2. That was Claire's second run. I really enjoyed this game, even though I already got tired of playing it a lot. Uh, but I became like quite the expert at it. I already knew where like a lot of things were and stuff. So that's a good thing. I am not completely done with it though, because like I said, I will come back later to just do the DLC, the extra stuff. So look forward to that. And yeah, um, I can just let you know that what the next games I'm going to be working on, they're going to be completely different. It's going to be games that you haven't seen on the channel before. So something new and fresh. And I'm really excited for it. So yeah. Anyways, thank you guys for watching my Resident Evil 2 playthrough. I know it was long, and if you stuck through it all this time, I applaud your patience, and I appreciate it. I know, you know, a year, a year to finish it. I know that's a long time, but it's just so much has been going on. But, yeah, I think we all need a break from Resident Evil I'm here, so... Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and uh, well, I guess I'll see you guys for the next one.